In order to install Agent using server automation, there are a couple of steps that you will need to do before being able to deploy the agent. In this video, we're going to guide you through these prerequisites in order to use the agent installer job. This video is based on links from docs that you can find on the description of this video. The first step is to verify that you already have the agent installer for requested version loaded on the input. These are normally loaded during server installation or upgrade using the UPI and this will be under Depot PMC Maintenance. But if you run into an issue during install or upgrade, this could be missing. And to install, you will need to run the following NSH script. Create Depot for agents.nsh. This script can be found on the installations for CrewSite server automation that were downloaded from the EPD site. In order to run, execute an application server with NSH, location and name of the script, files, Profile for application server, the role, application server host name, installer's location for platform, and the version of the agents that you are loading. Hit enter, and you will be seeing that it is loading everything. Once you load the installer, you can continue by going to File, Unified Agent Installer. It can also be done manually by each requirement, but we recommend to run the Unified Agent Installer, as it has all the steps in here. This wizard will create all the prerequisites to install agents using TrueSight Server Automation, and will guide you through these steps. First, you put the prefix of the object that will be created on this wizard, and click Next. On Platform Selection, there is a checkbox for the platform that you would like to install. In this case, we're interested on Linux and Windows 64 bits only. Select the agent bundle location that will be used to store objects created and click Next. This will show the agent installer for each platform that you selected. If for some reason you require to change the installer path, you can do it in here. Click Next and you will see the agent bundle configuration for each platform. In this step, we recommend that you modify the user.local and export this file, and add an entry for bladmin. So bladmin user will always have access to the target once installed. Once you modify the user.local for each platform, click Next. This screen is for the remote host authentication for non-Windows. The remote host authentication are used to get access to target servers in order to install the agent. It uses automation principle to know the credentials, and these credentials require root access to install on target. Click the green plus sign, and a pop-up will appear. The first drop-down for protocol gives you three options for non-Windows, SSH, SSH plus SU, and SSH plus sudo. The SSH plus SU is required if automation principle is mapped to an account that needs to do as SU to change to root to install agent. The next section is the user credentials. This is used in order to give credentials to login. You can use an already created automation principle or create a new one. Please note that if you select SSH plus SU, you'll need to expand in order to introduce the super credentials. This section is the same as previous, but for Windows. If you notice, there is something called PSX server. A PSX server functions as a proxy to execute PSX requests on agent as Windows host during agent installation. If you don't have a PSX server already, you will need to install on a server. This server needs to have agent newer than 8.2, and you need to add to TrueSight Server Automation. You can download from URL that is shown on the screen. Download PS tools. This will be a zip file. Extract the PSXEC on C Windows and run it. And accept the grid. Once you have everything in place for the PSXEC, fill all the information for the remote host authentication. Click on the plus sign. Create an automation principle. Select the PSX server.
click OK, and click Next. The following screen is for the remote host authentication rule. This is to identify if the target is Windows, Red Hat, or the required platform. As the agent is not installed yet, Server Automation does not wish the version of the OS for the target. So you need to create a rule so it can decide if the target is Windows, Linux, or any other. In my example, I'm creating a rule with the name, as all my Windows server are called clm aus and all my Red Hat are called clm two. If you don't remember the name of the automation principle, you can always go back to confirm name for Windows and Red Hat that you created previously. Click next in here. The following is the for the agent installer job options. You can select if you want to run the update server job properties with the configuration objects, the push sales, preserve as the generic failure, and to install Microsoft Visual C 2015. Select the agent installer job folder where it will be stored. Click next. This is the screen for targets, just in case you require. And the last screen is just a summary for everything you did previously. Click Finish, and it will be created everything required for the agent installer job. For example, the automation principle for Windows and Linux, the agent installer job, and the agent bottle. The last part before installing agent using this job is to make sure SMB2 is enabled on Windows targets, as this is a requirement for agent installer job. You can confirm or enable on PowerShell with commands shown on the screen. Thanks a lot for watching this video.